For this morning's scripture, a reading from Micah in chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead my case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear, you mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He is lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. My people, remember what Balak, king of Moab, plotted, and what Balaam, son of Beor, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gal, that you may know that the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression? the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, to act justly and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. The Gospel reading for this morning comes from Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of the Lord. This scripture passage is often called the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes is just a fancy name for the blessings, for the many ways that we have been blessed. And we might like to think that I can list off all the different ways that I have been blessed. And if you were to go down that list, I doubt very many of us would put, I'm blessed because I mourn. I'm blessed because I'm poor. I'm blessed because I am meek. I am blessed because people are persecuting me. I am blessed because of all these bad things. Most of us put blessings of all the good things. I'm blessed because I have a loving family. I'm blessed because I have a reliable vehicle that can drive me back and forth to work. I'm blessed because I have work. I'm blessed because I have food. I'm blessed because I can go wherever I want and pretty much do whatever I want. I'm blessed because I have people I can trust and call on. When we look at blessings... We look at things that are positive for us. We rarely look at our blessings as things that are a detriment. You see, our world looks at us and they look at everybody else and they say, well, good things are money, status, power, control. If you have those things, you're winning. You're good at life. You're successful. When something bad happens... What do people normally say? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry something bad happened. 
Because we want to say that, you know, when bad things happen, we don't like it. We don't want bad things. We don't want to be poor in spirit. We don't want to lose people that we love. We don't want to be hungry. We don't want to think that like, there's no justice in the world. No one comes up to you and after you've lost someone that you love and says, you know what? I'm so glad you get to mourn. Now you're blessed. Someone might say that to you and you might want to smack them. But there's a part of our, of our humanness where we want to be happy. We want to be all built up. But it doesn't take much to get knocked over, does it? It doesn't take much to have our blessings kind of stripped away and then we feel, oh my goodness, if I only had a bigger TV, then I would feel better about myself. Because then I could watch the big game on a big, big screen with the surround sound. And maybe I should get a new sofa while we're at it. There's a part of us that can't help it. We can only think in terms of material goods. But this list of blessings almost lists no material goods at all. In fact, all the blessings are the opposite. So for us, when we list out our blessings, what are we going to list out? How we're humble, how we're weak, meek, poor in spirit, how we're hungering and thirsting for justice, for righteousness. In Greek, it's the same word, by the way. When people say righteousness, it's dikaiosune, which also means justice. So when people cry out for righteousness, they're crying out for justice. Now, how many of you out there in the congregation helped me knock down this brick wall? I have another favor to ask. Would you be willing to come up a second time and help me do something different with the blocks? If you'd be willing to help out do something different with the blocks, why don't you come on up here? What we're going to do is instead of building these up into a big tower, because what happened when we built it up so tall? What happened? It would always fall over, right? Well, maybe instead of building it up as a tower, we could lay them all down and build them as a road. So what if we took the bricks and made a road that was like, put the bricks like this. Can we, go like, can we set them up like this so that they point long way like this? And if we make it five wide... So can you make it five wide? One, two, three, four, five. And then we'll make it go from the steps all the way back here to this wall here. Okay. There you go. Now put those all together. Let's put them all together. And see if you can build them all the way back and connect them to these five. Okay? Okay. So get all those blocks and make a big row all the way back to here. While you guys make that road, I'm going to talk to everybody in the congregation for a minute, okay? How many of you have a little heart? You got your little hearts? If you didn't get a heart, maybe share one. They were in the little fellowship pads, so you can pass the pads and put your name in there if you didn't already. But what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take the hearts, and I'd like you to think about the Beatitudes, this passage that we read today. And maybe think about a time you were blessed in a situation that was not ideal. Maybe there was a time you were blessed when you were mourning or when you felt poor in spirit. Or maybe there was a time when you were hungering and thirsting for righteousness and there was a blessing that came to you. You all are doing such a great job. I love it. Take the heart and grab a pencil or a pen or whatever you have handy and I'd like you to write down a blessing on that heart. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to share a ton of details. You could just put a name, a word, or a phrase. If you don't want to write, you could draw a picture on your heart. And you could draw a picture of some way that you feel blessed. How's the road look? That looks fabulous. All right, I need you all to come down and give me a high five for that awesome road. Thank you. High five. High five. Good job. Okay, you all can go sit back down. Now, look at this fabulous road the kids built. You know, once you build these bricks, you know, three or four high, it gets very unstable. But did you know that laying down flat like this, they can actually support if I stand on them? 
These bricks are now pretty strong, huh? Now, if we look at our blessings, not as a chance to build ourselves up, but instead if we use our blessings to pave our way to something greater, then our blessings can have much more strength. So now, do we have our youth ushers in the back ready to collect the hearts? So what I'd like for you to do now, for all of you who have written on your little hearts, um, pass them down to the middle of the road, and we're going to have our ushers come by with the collection trays. So I'd like everyone to put their hearts into these trays. And what, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take all of these blessings and we're going to take them and we're going to glue them to this wall. This is our sure foundation. This is the communion table. This wall represents the faith that we have in Christ. This wall is going to be all the ways God has worked in us and through us, through our blessings. So if everybody wants to go ahead and just dump your hearts into the trays, we don't actually have to pass the trays. Just go ahead and just walk down the aisles and have everybody put the hearts in the trays there. That'll make things easy. And then um, could one of you come back here? Did you all have hearts back here? I'm sorry. That was my fault. I meant to, to do that. Are there a few extra hearts? Okay. Here we go. Extra hearts. Extra hearts. All right. A couple of extra hearts here. Okay, that should be plenty. Thank you. All right, here, I'll give you, you just pass those along and make sure everybody gets a heart and then you all can participate too. Wonderful. All right, everybody's got a heart. So now for those of you who shared a blessing, what we have now is we have some glue sticks up here, so we're going to glue them up. So if the ushers want to bring the hearts back up front here. The power of the mighty glue stick. So you can go ahead and just put, the, put them right down here on the floor, on the brick wall, the bottom of the brick floor. So here you go. Here's a glue stick for you and a glue stick for you. Go ahead and just slap a bunch of glue on the back of the heart and just right there, all over the whole wall, okay? It doesn't matter what color, what goes where, what size or anything, just stick them on there. There we go. All right. The Beatitudes are something that have been part of Christian tradition for 2,000 years. A question came up during one of the Bible studies this week. Well, who is Jesus telling this to? Because it says the crowds were gathering. So then Jesus went up on a mountainside and talked to his disciples. So people have often wondered, is this Jesus by himself with just his 12 disciples? Or is this Jesus talking to the multitudes, telling them about all these blessings? And I'll give you the answer. We don't know. The Bible says what it says. It says that there were groups of people following Jesus and he went up on a mountaintop and told his disciples these blessings. Tradition has it that there was a large group of people because even if it was just the 12 disciples, you know what those 12 disciples did? They went and they told everybody about what Jesus had said on the mountaintop. They didn't have PA systems, so maybe Jesus was just talking to the 12 that could hear and then everybody else kind of sitting around the rest of the mountainside. It was kind of like they're just hanging out with a picnic and then afterwards they got into small groups, and talked about what Jesus said. And people were like, what did he say? I couldn't quite hear. But what Jesus was trying to do in telling them these Beatitudes is to remind them of something that we often forget. We often forget that our value to God is not measured in our success. Our value to God is not measured in our success. Because if our value was measured in our successes, then God would be like, blessed is everyone who has three Mercedes. Blessed is everyone who has a private jet. Blessed are those who have you know, enough money that they can do whatever they want with. But that's not what Jesus says. That's not what God says. That's not the story of Scripture. 
In fact, it's very much the opposite. God said, blessed are those who give what they have to others. God said, blessed are those who are willing to give up everything to follow Christ. So when Jesus comes down and gives these blessings, when he gives these beatitudes, he's telling them to the people that don't have three Mercedes, to the people that don't have private jets, saying, blessed are you who are poor in spirit. Blessed are you who are meek. Blessed are you who mourn, who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And when you do the right thing, when people give you a hard time about doing the right thing, do it because of me, because I told you to do it. And in so doing, then you will know that you are part of my kingdom. You will know that you have received my mercy. You will know that I am with you. Now, ultimately, don't we all want to be a part of God's kingdom? Don't we all want to be close to God and feel God's presence? Well, if we do, there's one sure thing that we can do. We can tear down the wall that we build up for ourselves, lay it down as a path to Christ. This morning, when we come for communion, as we come down this aisle to take communion by intention, imagine this wall extends all the way down the sanctuary. This wall that had been built up is a walkway for us to come to Christ. The blessings that God gives us are our humility, our patience, our love. And in so doing, we lay those down as we come forward to take communion. And when we take communion, that wall will never be shaken. That wall of God's strength will never be moved. Christ is our cornerstone. Christ is the strong one. Christ is the one that gives us the strength that we need. So friends, as we pray, as we read our scriptures, as we give thanks for our blessings, let's not forget what Christ has called us to do with our blessings. Let's not forget what our blessings are really are. And let us never forget the one who gave his life, became a mockery in the eyes of the world, and died for our sake, so that we who follow in word and in deed might share in the same promise. So as you both continue to do the hearts, that's great. If they need to overlap, that's fine. All right. That's a lot of hearts. You all did a lot of great prayers. Um, would someone like to come and help with the hearts? Would you like, why don't you come on up and help with the hearts? There's, there's a couple more glue sticks down there, so go ahead and get on up there on those bricks and start gluing those hearts up there. The rest of us, we're going to pray. Lord, we give you thanks for this morning for the opportunity for building a foundation of blessings, to see what you have done for us and who you call us to be. So Lord, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.